Morning all. Let's have a look at the fifth round encounter between Michael Adams playing white and Magnus Carlsen playing black. Adams kicked off with e4 and Magnus playing classically played e5. After knight f3, knight c6, we have a Roy Lopez, a6, bishop a4. And now knight f6, Adams simply castles here. Bishop e7 from Magnus. And potentially there's a martial gambit coming up. This next move avoids the martial gambit. And white aims for usually a small advantage here. So b5, bishop b3. After d6, a4. Okay, so an immediate threat of taking a loose rook. So that is protected with bishop d7. And now h3 preventing any use of g4, that annoying pin later on this knight. Black castles. Bishop e3. Another poker playing h3, that knight g4 is not annoying now. And now make this plays bishop e6, which is a a dynamic option, accepting doubled pawns, potentially, uh, but giving black some potential play maybe along the f file later in exchange. But can these double pawns be exploited? Adams takes up the challenge. He plays bishop takes e6. After f takes e, he plays knight bd2. Okay. In this position, now we see b4, trying to discourage white from playing something like c3 because this b file could be very dangerous. But uh, white plays it anyway. And Magnus actually doesn't play b takes c, but rather plays d5, which liberates the bishop and the queen and put some questions over white structure here in the center. But there is a, a seemingly forcing move which is attractive to white and that is used here, namely c takes b4. So if knight takes b4, the knight takes e5 is on. And if bishop takes b4, then again, there are other interesting possibilities like rook c1, eye c6. So this is quite a danger at the moment as well, this c file. But uh, Magnus makes this into a pure pawn sack. He just plays a very simple quiet move here. He just plays bishop d6. So guarding against b5 and knight e5s. The knight is now free to actually use that b4 square. And we see b5. And now first a takes b, making sure white's pawns are doubled. Exchanges off a pair of rooks, and then uses knight b4, attacking d3. Adams just plays d4 here, and it seems for the moment he's doing okay. Immediate threat of winning a piece potentially. E takes d4, knight takes d4 on e6, that's protected with queen e8. Now we see queen a4, which supports the idea of knight c6. The queen is supporting knight c6 here and offering a counter pawn sack as well to try and fracture black structure, which Magnus accepts actually. He plays knight takes e4 getting back a pawn, but now he's got these um, pawns which don't look too healthy. So again, it looks as though white's doing okay here. Uh, but there's no defense of knight on f3 now, so h2 is more vulnerable than usual. That's something to, to bear in mind, this diagonal in general. So maybe black has some dynamism to consider. After knight c6, threatening knight to the goes to d5. And now there is actually potentially uh, 
some tricks emerging in this position and we see the first like, major tactical trick now as a consequence of this F file and this diagonal because after knight takes e3 it seems f takes e is not possible we'll go go over this in the second pass but um, just briefly now f takes e3 there'll be bishop h2 check winning this rook on f1 so that's a major trick to consider here so that's why queen takes e3 looks like the only way to recapture that black now plays rook f5 on that b5 pawn and this is starting to be quite awkward the knight goes back to d4 protecting b5 rook e5 queen b3 in this position though it looks as though if white's given another move there could be some serious threats still emerging to do with e6 Like this shields e6 with rook d5 and not doesn't give white a chance to do much attacking that knight queen c4 and now queen f7 is played with potential ideas of queen f4 being handy for h2 the move b3 is played just protecting the queen and being able to answer for example queen f4 with maybe knight f3 protecting h2 without losing the queen Magnus now plays queen d7 and there's a concrete threat now rook takes d4, queen takes d4, bishop h2 check winning the queen so white is under pressure here and it's it's got to be a very difficult position to play actually If rook d1, maybe bishop c5, and there's a nasty, very nasty pin on that d file. So this knight gets out of the way of knight f3. And Magnus takes on b5. So Magnus has restored concretely material equality and has this dangerous looking bishop against the knight. So it seems as though black is doing very well now. Rook a1. And we see rook d5. This diagonal is shielded now with g3, but it is weakening a bit the king position potentially. Now, it seems actually also there was a viable, attractive looking move rook a8 check in this position, which will check in the second pass of this game after rook d5, rook a h8 was interesting as well perhaps to consider but g3, h6 which deprives white of the g5 square and lets the king potentially use h7 queen e4 and now against rook a8, queen e8 shielding that first row king g2 now perhaps you might consider this a surprising move king f7 just getting off that first row against any potential rook a8 freeing up the rook basically without any rook a8 Adams plays rook a2 and we see queen d8 and it looks as though white's doing okay there's no problem black's doing okay as well maybe it will end up in a draw this position potentially rook e2 queen f6 h4 is played here queen f5 and here is where maybe this is a little slip up it looks as though what well, white is under pressure and black potentially has got a slightly better minor piece here and this plays queen c4 and this allows quite aggressive quite an aggressive move I believe this might be the first blunder of the game in recent moves this queen c4 
it enables quite a strong forcing move, which seems to damage White's pawn structure and king safety at the same time. The forcing move is rook d3. On that f3 knight. And this next move looks quite ugly really. Rook e3 is played. And White's king safety is further damaged with rook takes e3. F takes e3. We see now that the second row is a bit windy here. G3 and e3 are not desirable. That too, that desirable. Manicus's next move exploits both these elements of the position, both the second row and g3, with queen b1. He's threatening uh, quite a nasty check now on the second row, potentially to get to this f2 square to attack g3. It's looking very dangerous. And the queen can't easily come back without losing b3 either. <coughs> Pardon me. Pardon me. So now Adams plays e4, which doesn't really help matters. It's a bit of a time pressure blunder, I think. Move 40. We see check. That's king h3, which doesn't look too healthy. Queen f2. Double attack on g3, threatening mate and f3. It has gone a bit pear-shaped here, it seems. e5. For the first time, Magnus is going to move two up now. He plays queen takes f3. After e takes d6, check. King g4. Now queen d1 check, picking up an extra pawn. Okay, which you might not think is necessarily the end of the game, but um, Mangus is quite renowned now for end games. After h5, Mangus plays c5. With g4, we see queen d4. The king has got enough time for this b pawn if queen takes, and these pawns will just crash down. So that's avoided. Queen f1 check, king e7. Queen f3. Threatening all sorts of checks, maybe that's fended off with queen d5. Queen c3 on e5 on g7 on that. So e5 is played, defending g7. We see king g3, and now Magnus puts his king towards the center. Now queen c4 doesn't really help white here. Mangus is able to simplify now effectively. He just takes the queen off. And in this very simplified king and pawn in the game, where Mangus has the extra pawn, he still has to be very careful that White is not able to get some sort of draw construct. He plays e4. After king f4, the idea is revealed of e4, which is to play e3. And it's a winning endgame position because of Zugzwang. If king takes e3 then king e5 and white is in Zugzwang. For example, where does white king go now? If he goes to d3 then king f4. If he goes to f3 then king d4. It's a Zugzwang position. Pretty nasty. g5 is pretty helpless. Let's just take it. So, Adams is uh, not doing too well here. He plays king f3 and it's offered again that pawn with king e6. Uh, not king e5 which might enable white to set up opposition for longer or maybe indefinitely. So just king e6 just waiting for the Zugzwang position White plays king e2. We see king f6. The king's coming to g5 anyway. Now, king f3, king g5. And it's pretty clear that black is doing very well. The final question remains about this c pawn versus black's pawns. King takes e3, king takes g4, king e4, king takes h5. The g pawn is now ready to run. King d5, g5, 
King takes c5, g4. King tries to come back, but uh, after g3, king e3, black just plays king g4. And in this position, Michael Adams resigned. His pawn's a bit too slow here. Okay, let's check this out, this final position technically, and go through the game. Congratulations again to Magnus. He's having a fantastic tournament. So, this uh, round five, uh, let's see what happens in this final position concretely. If c5, the move here is king h3. Let's have a quick look at g2 if that blows things. Yes, it would actually blow the entire advantage to play g2 here. Because of king f2, and now what? If king h3, there's king g1. That blockade has to be avoided. So the way to play this position is to play invest one more move of the king, king h3. If c6, g2 is going to be with check. Very important point. Queening with check. Otherwise, this is getting a bit dangerous in terms of timing because that'll be check as well. So here, c7, we just queen with check. If king f2, we stop the blockade. King h2. Okay, so let's go back in this game and see any opportunities missed, etc., where the major blunders were, if any. So, Adams had a good position, it seems, out of the opening, reasonable position. Off d6, a4, it seems fair enough. h3, all seems fair enough. Bishop e3, seems sensible. Okay, taking on e6 is liked by the engine here. Why not? It's a move. Damages black's pawn structure in, in theory. But, um, okay, knight bd2. We saw b4 from black. c3. With ambitions, maybe to use that c file as well as pressure on e5. d5 seems a little bit controversial because of the e5 pawn. But, um, didn't seem that dangerous in this game continuation. Black is just treating this as a kind of gambit. That's gambiting pawn temporarily. Playing bishop d6, which he really likes, just protecting e5. What can white do here? In fact, is black actually threatening something like d4 if given another chance? Knight takes b4, queen d7. Okay, not really. Black just wants to get that back, that pawn. Okay, so white preserves his extra pawn with b5. That's the main thing. After a takes b, a takes b. Exchange of rooks. It still seems technically white's doing okay, but um, somehow black's position looks interestingly dynamic with this f file, this semi open f file in exchange for the noble pawns. It's an interesting dynamic to have. You see, e takes d4, knight takes d4, and queen e8. One of the best ways to protect the pawn. On queen e7, that might be inferior. Let's have a quick look at that. e takes d5, knight takes knight e4. And what would be the concrete threat here? Knight takes and queen a3, perhaps. Okay, so queen e8 was played to protect that pawn, and it also eyes b5, which could be useful later. After queen a4, black plays knight takes e4, fair enough, and again, in this position, it seems white still, at this point, technically doing okay, although there seems to be more threats emerging 
uh, more in, in black's court to fret on white. Now this next move, knight actually knight b d five is not actually liked by the engine here. You can see queen a eight and knight takes c six with a slight advantage. So white, you see that after knight d five, it's almost as if white's got a significant advantage in this game continuation. More than half a pawn. So that's interesting. It's difficult uh, not to be uh, biased by Mengs and the game result here. But um, actually, let's flip the board. We should have really take this from the winner's point of view. Okay, so in this position, we saw the move knight d5 being played. So on knight takes c6, b takes queen h5 queen takes e4 white structure looks very comfortable here compared to the game on queen f5 white can even just take on f5 and still have a very nice position so something really strange seems to happen here with Magnus's move which is not initially liked uh, by, by the engine here on depth 19 it's not mentioned, knight d5. So why would this be? Queen takes e4 seems fair enough. After knight takes e3, white has to sidestep the little trap of bishop h2 check mentioned before. So queen takes e3. Is white actually better or is it just, uh, is the engine simply wrong here? If black has to play e5, he's blocking in his own bishop, it seems on the surface an, an irrational move to play e5 here. If, if going with this choice, queen d3, and it seems white's doing very nicely. This sort of position, no compromise of the kingside pawns. And e5 under fire, the knight seems very useful on c6 for eyeing e5. Okay. And if black is forced to play with a pawn sack, it looks a bit, a bit on the desperate side, really. This position. It looks a bit dangerous. In fact, there's even there's even tactical tricks like rook f5 here, and for queen takes knight e7 check. So something strange happened here. After queen takes e3, it seems technically white was doing very well. Move 24. Magnus plays the move rook f5, which is coming up as a viable alternative to e5, which just looks poxy, really. It blocks in the bishop. Rook f5 looks much more active, keeping that bishop scope, and eyeing potentially b5. Okay. Perhaps here is a critical blunder, in fact. This might be a critical blunder at move 25, when this knight, which seems to be doing some jobs here of protecting that pawn, shielding the pawn from the queen. It was retreated uh, with knight d4. I guess we're going to see an evaluation shift slightly down there with knight d4. Maybe better, let's have a look, potentially better candidate. Queen e2, what would be the threat? Or is it just it's just parrying rook takes b5 here? It's protecting that pawn. And if rook d5, rook a1, let's go with h6. Rook e1, it seems, you know, white is doing uh, okay here. You might think, what is going on actually with this e6 pawn? It's taking that would be a nasty trap with rook d1 check. So that e6 pawn is not as vulnerable as it seems. But it seems white's still doing okay there in this continuation. Okay, so after rook f5, we saw knight d4. Nothing too disastrous, but it is technically not as desirable, it seems now. Rook e5 attacking the queen. Queen b3. 
rook d5, we see queen c4. Again, white is technically doing okay though. There is some dynamism though, and there is dynamic attacking threats like queen f4 to have to be extinguished in this position. b3 is liked by the engineer protecting the queen. That is, that is the major threat here, queen f4 is a very concrete threat to handle. So b3 handles that indirectly. Now on queen f4, I guess there'll be knight f3, and that's adequate for white, with the queen protected. So, I think let's play queen d7 here. And now, knight c6, again, it seems white's doing okay with knight c6. Not too bad position. This knight retreat might be a blunder here. We see all, almost over half a pawn advantage at a certain depth, a reasonable depth. Knight f3, and again, with giving up this pawn, it doesn't seem as attractive now for white. It's almost as if black's virtually equalized now, and it looks as though black should be okay. But uh, with rook a1, why wasn't rook a8 useful? Let's see this. Rook d5. Is rook a8 hopeless? In the game g3 was played, which is liked by our engine here. If rook a8 check. Okay, king f7. There's nothing to worry about here. This knight, this rook takes g5. Okay, so now there's, there is a threat of rook d1 check. And a problem here. If g3 in this position, then queen b5. So what would be happening here? Doesn't this look dangerous with the king on f7? Let's have a look at queen g4. h5, because g5 is, is okay here. With the, this battery. Queen e4. Queen takes b3. Might be possible. Okay, maybe the king is not so fragile with the rook on, on d5 here. So let's go back. So maybe that's why potentially uh, Adams is not keen with this check, which looks initially quite desirable. This plays g3, keeping that check in reserve. And we see h6. And now queen e4. Is there actually a concrete threat here, rook a8? Let's have a look. Rook a8. Is emerging as a dangerous move because of knight e5 now being supported. Okay, so queen e8 extinguishes rook a8. King g2. Now either king g2 or b4, again, white's doing okay. So let's be try and be an objective here that uh, Adams was doing okay at move 33, but is approaching you know, time pressure trying to get to that move 40 where extra time occurs. So rook a2, this might be a little slip up rook a2, it looks on, on the passive side, b4, if that's possible, looks interesting, but what, what is actually the idea of b4? Okay, it is protected by the queen. It's potentially a decoy of rook e1 on e6, then b5, might be desirable. Okay, but uh, Adams plays rook a2, which seems fair enough. Queen d8. Rook e2 is putting pressure on e6 anyway. Queen f6. Which gives the queen this nice diagonal, as well as access to f3. It's a kind of double attack in the position. After h4, that's, that looks like a compromising move, h4. If we look at this before and after, technically it's a little bit of a, a compromise. Maybe if White wants to keep solid here, can he do it with Rook e3, for example? If Bishop c5, Rook goes back, should be okay for White. 
Did Adams really slip up here? Or start slipping up? He plays h4. And we see now queen f5. So why is queen f5 good here and, and not before? Let's just quickly check that out. If rook e3, is queen f5 actually possible here? Potentially there's less to worry about. With a pawn here, it's protecting g4. So it might mean this queen is, is freer to move to c4 or a4 without too, um, too many concerns. It still seems fine for white this position, but anyway, we have a pawn on h4 in the game. So for the moment now, okay, this is looking now as though black is resting a tiny advantage, not just equalizing though. So what has happened? If queen takes f5, e takes f, getting the pawn out of the firing line, and we're in a nice sort of Magnus Carlsen end game where he's got that bishop versus knight. For example, if, if the rooks come off, this might even be better for black now already, just g5. This kind of position, let's have a quick look at it. It shouldn't be that much to write home about, but um, okay. In the game, it was more dangerous of all the pieces being on uh, with Queen C4. And now, for the first time, black is creeping up with an advantage. So maybe Queen, queen takes F5 wasn't such a bad move. This other engine move just looks ridiculous to play Queen A4. It does look like a classic computer move. It just seems irrelevant to the position. But is it? And Queen D7 is a concrete uh, threat. And so, for example, on Rook D3, Queen D7. Now here, that that loop, Queen E6 is, is threatened with check. So King F8 trying to avoid Queen takes E6 being check. Okay. And this this should be fine. This should be fine. Keep keep the checks up. So queen queen a four, computer looking move, might might be quite good to keep black tied down in this position. Uh, you might think, well, what about king g eight? Just trying to tuck the king away. Here yeah, knight d four. Say so queen g four. Knight takes e6. The other point of this computer looking move is it is protected by the pawn. So this looks dangerous for black, more dangerous than the game. In the game, what we saw was actually um, a little slip up, it seems, because of rook d3. It's a nasty forcing move, which really changes the picture here of the position. Okay, knight e1 is interesting to consider to defend that. That threat and rook e3 may be slightly worse than knight e1. On knight e1, it's starting to look really difficult actually. Rook d1. Let's say the knight goes back. Queen d5. Pinning that knight. It just doesn't look as nice now, this position. It looks as though black's getting coordination. This position does not look too pleasant. Also, b3 looks very vulnerable. Is there a chance for white with h5 just offering b3? It's in black's court now, I think. So let's go back to the game, which was also in black's court now. So we see instead of knight e1, we see rook e3, so structural damage as well for the first time. A lot of pawn islands after rook takes e3. Now, three pawn islands for white. And to be fair, three pawn islands still for black. So, queen b1. e4 may be a blunder here. An overly ambitious move. On knight d4, that seems fairly sensible in this position to play knight d4 for targeting e6. Check. 
Queen e5 is the problem. Protecting g3, g5, for example. c5 this looks okay for black this bishop seems much better than knight here okay so but in the game uh, we see the move e4 and now look look at this evaluation shift e4 I think can be classed as a small inaccuracy or a major inaccuracy it seems white's advantage well, black's advantage rather is increasing significantly now with a check on the second rank. Okay, king h3 and now queen f2 is looking really dangerous. White's having to give up a pawn, e5 looks virtually forced. Other things just don't work. So e5 giving up a pawn. So queen takes f3, we see check, check, taking on d6. Taking with the pawn is also possible, the queen it looks fine. Okay, so in this position h5 maybe is a bit loosening as well potentially, it does give the g5 square for the black king, potentially. Uh, so could white have offered a uh, stiffer resistance with b4? Potentially, it's a, it's a bit of a tricky position, though it, it is a pawn down now, but uh, it's only a queen ending. It's, traditionally, it's very, very hard to, to win. Uh, but So maybe h5, okay, in retrospect, it gives the g5 square. Well, we can see visually it gives up potentially the g5 square, but um, uh, it's difficult maybe to anticipate things are going to get that difficult but um, they soon do it seems this black queen is keeping the white queen out of the game and black's advantage already seems somehow pronounced and this is just absolutely lost now in one move with queen c4 so it's just going from a slightly worse position to a clearly worse position to a totally lost position. Uh, Adams just gives up here. So what was actually being threatened here, for example? If we go with queen b2 as an example, check, queen e3, let's go with uh, check, check. Where do these, where do these checks lead? I think where would they lead? Queen e2 threatens now queen h2 mate. Can't see anything that concrete if it's just loads and loads of checks, okay black's better. But um white is looking forward to a lot of checks in this position. So because this evaluation is not going up clearly, is there a clear plan? It's e4 in this variation to push this pawn. Let's go with this check. e4 props up here. Queen c2. Check. Now e4 in this position. This, this is a running pass pawn. So black has the winning asset seems there, despite all the potential for checks. That looks like the logical asset to use anyway. Also supports queen f2. So it's a bit of a miserable position. So maybe Adams has just had enough, really. Maybe he's frustrated by this game. In the game we just see queen c4. Maybe, or maybe he thought there's a chance to draw this king and pawn ending, but um, black plays extremely accurately here to play the move e4. If he had played anything else, it doesn't look as pronounced. If he had played king e6, so we see man, this is 
uh, absolutely perfect and gameplay here on king e6 king f3 and this blockade is going to be very hard surely to do something about it's be potentially very unpleasant uh, much more chances for white here in this scenario much more favorable for white I think we're looking at a draw in this scenario with loads of checks by both sides. So in the game, Magnus just totally bypassed everything like this. He just plays e4. He's just going for that g5 weakness, potentially, and the Zugzwein. So king f4 was played. What else? So e3, we get the Zugzwein. If king takes e3, king e5, as mentioned before, doesn't matter where the king moves, just, you just take uh, the weakness of the last move here. Ouch. So this this is all over now, all of a sudden. It isn't going to be a 100 move game. Maybe Adams is thinking if he loses quicker rather than a grueling uh, game into the night, he can have more energy for the next day. Uh, so so far Adams has had a great tournament compared to last year. Last year was pretty disastrous, losing quite a few games, so maybe he's aware about conserving his energies for other battles. But um okay, in in this final end game it's just one tempo it seems, which makes a difference. Otherwise this C pawn could have compensated for being a pawn down. Just one tempo in it. Which is remarkable as well. I think you could could argue. King G four and in this position uh well Black is winning with King H three. G two does not does not work. So Adams resigns around here anyway, up to King G four I think. What can we say? Adam seems to have a reasonably good position until quite late on, approaching move 40. Then things started to go slightly wrong with rook, that rook d3 move. Some structural damage, he lost a pawn, and even in that queen ending there were potential for lots of checks, but it would have been a grueling game, probably lasting for hours more. He, he went in for a quick termination of the game. Okay, uh, comments or questions on YouTube? Thanks very much.